pretty night in lower downtown Denver as the Rockies are set to play a little hardball at 20th and Blake. And tonight, they'll open up a three-game set against the Washington Nationals, currently in first place, along with the Atlanta Braves in the National League East. Welcome upstairs, everybody. Glad, as always, that you're along with us with my partner, Jeff Houston. I'm Drew Goodman. The Rockies struggled in Pittsburgh. They lost three ball games there despite getting very good starting pitching. And when you're struggling, you want to get home and you want to start winning at home. Yeah, and that's something they did early on, something they talked about in spring training. Re reestablish some dominance here at Coors Field. It hasn't happened lately, but it's nice to come back home and get amongst your fans, but give them something to cheer about. Go out there and, and get a couple W's underneath your belt. Yeah, unfortunately, one of the biggest stories this year for the Rockies is the number of injuries they've suffered. And a guy who was having a tremendous year, should have been an all-star, Justin Morneau, that neck is uh, not alleviated enough that uh, he could play. So the Rockies placed him on the disabled list. That's retroactive to prior to the All-Star break, so hopefully only about a week or so. Ben Paulson was called up from AAA Colorado Springs. He'll make his Major League debut. Third round pick out of Clemson a few years ago. By the way, Jair Jurgens was designated for assignment as well today. But Ben Paulson uh, is eager to go. He was having a tremendous year in AAA. He'll play first base tonight. Yeah, kind of a grinder. It's been a couple years at AA, two years at AAA, so it's nice to see him finally get that call up. And any Anytime you get that call, you're so excited, nervous, you want to tell everybody. But I'm looking forward to seeing him. Man. He's worked hard to get here. Yep, and he's got a lot of family here. It'll be a special night for Ben Paulson. He'll be in the middle of the Rockies. Order quick update on Troy Tulowitzki. He will not play tonight. He is getting better. He's still very sore, perhaps by the end of the series. And let's hope so, because each day it's getting better, but you don't want to rush it where he would tear something and be out for a much longer period of time. Well, we mentioned the Rockies got three very good starts in Pittsburgh. When we come back, Mark Stapp will have more on that story. The Rockies getting ready to take on the Nats.
Purple Monday night at Coors Field as the Rockies open up a six-game homestand, first three against the Washington Nationals. If you're a baseball fan, you've heard it before. It all starts on the hill. And in Pittsburgh this past weekend, the Rockies really had good starting pitching. It started on the hill. They got off on the right foot with three lefties getting the job done. Friday night, it was Jorge De La Rosa. And then Saturday night, it was Brett Anderson. And then Sunday afternoon, Tyler Matzik. These three allowed all of five earned runs in their 19 innings of work. The problem is the Rockies weren't able to get wins because the bullpen couldn't capitalize. But it's a good thing to get a good start. And you know who's had two good starts since he returned the rotation? That would be Franklin Morales. And Morales hits the hill tonight. Franklin will make his 13th start of the season. And Morales has pitched well in his last two. In fact, he has five wins on the year. That's second most of anyone on the Rockies pitching roster. And I asked Walt Weiss today, he talks about his competitiveness, if that's his top trait as a pitcher. Yeah, I think that and the fact that he's very durable and very versatile. Um, we've used him in a few different roles uh, this year, and he's done that throughout his career. But... Um, He's, he's extremely durable. You know, he, he can. He's one of those guys that can pitch a lot in in, uh, in a variety of roles, and that's exactly what he's done. And he's done it for the most part fairly well for Walt Weiss. This will be his 14th start. He's allowed just an earned run in each of his last two on July 3rd and July 7th. So the Rockies hope that he can pick up here in the second half where he left off in the first as he gets the outing tonight against the Washington Nationals. When we come back. Rockies trying to swap the Nats as we get ready to start up the homestead here at Coors Field. First pitch coming up on Root Sports. Root Sports is brought to you by your neighborhood Toyota stores. Toyota, let's go places. By Anova Cancer Care, advanced prostate cancer treatment. Visit anovacc.com. By CenturyLink, your link to what's next. And by University of Colorado Health. Pretty night, partially cloudy this evening in lower downtown Denver. Man, it's hot out. Temperature was 101 on the car thermometer when I uh, got out this afternoon. Mine only said 97. Well, you know what? We'll split the difference. We'll call it 99. That's hot. In fact, in talking to some of the nationals on the field, even Matt Williams, who spent a lot of his life in the desert, either at UNLV where he went to college or Arizona where he played and he coached for so long, 
I said, man, it's hot here. <laughs> no Franklin humidity, Mor though. Yeah, exactly. Franklin Morales uh, getting ready to go. He'll make the start tonight for the Rockies, opposed by Doug Fister, the uh, tall sinker baller for Washington. So Frankie's ready to go, and the first guy he'll face is Denard Spann. Span had a good ball game yesterday. He was on base three times as the Nationals defeated in walk-off style the Milwaukee Brewers 5-4 in a Jason Worth double, and it was the Span bobblehead day at Nationals Park. So particularly special for Denard. Let's take a look at the rest of Matt Williams' lineup. And Anthony Rendon will bat second. He's swinging the bat. Well, Jason Worth, the hero from yesterday, will bat third. Then Adam LaRoche, a steady RBI man. Ryan Zimmerman will bat fifth. Note that Zimmerman's in left field. Ian Desmond, Wilson Ramos, Danny Espinosa, and Doug Fister. Let's take a look at the numbers on Franklin Morales. They're brought to you by Nova Cancer Care. Painless outpatient treatment of prostate cancer. Visit novacc.com. Well, it's pretty nice when you have somebody a Franklin Morales statue where he can start, he can relieve, go back into the starting rotation, rotation because he has a very durable arm. He's never started against the Washington Nationals, but he has pitched against them five other times, six and two-thirds innings, he's only three hits, given up nine strikeouts. So he's looking forward to going up against these Nationals. Take a look at the Rockies defensively, brought to you by Excel Energy, because responsible by nature.com today to learn more. Corey Dickerson and left, Charlie Blackman back in there. He had yesterday off when he turned the ankle Saturday night. Cargo is in right. Arenado Rutledge again for Tulo, as we mentioned. LeMay is in second. Ben Paulson in his major league debut at first base. And Willeen Rosario has the gear on. Well, we just got word from the Rockies clubhouse that Boone Logan, who's been battling a neck issue, has been placed on the disabled list. And Nick Massett has been activated. So Nick Massett is in the bullpen tonight. The Rockies, at one point, you know, you had three lefties. Yeah. That was the design. Frankie was going to be one of those lefties. Rex Brothers, Boone Logan, who was signed to a three-year deal in the offseason. Now the Rockies tonight will have one lefty down there, and that's Rex Brothers. It just shows you that you can never have enough left-handers because with all the injuries, everything that's going on, now you're just with Juan and Rex. It kind of reminds me of those times, those years with San Diego where they just have one out there, sometimes none. But, you know, for Walt, he's been juggling that bullpen out there for a few days with Boone Logan being down, but you get Nick Massett, another arm back tonight. So we are ready to go. Denard Span will be first. It's interesting, if you looked at in the paper this morning or on the internet, in the National League, each division has a two-way tie atop the division. In the NL East, it is these Washington Nationals tied with the Atlanta Braves. The Central has uh, the Cardinals and Brewers tied. And out West, it's the uh, Dodgers and Giants tied up. Denard Spann is pretty steady. He's going to hit around 280. He's going to play solid defense. He's going to get on base, plays the game the right way. Former Minnesota twin, in fact, hit 283 in 2012, 279 last year, and he begins the uh, evening at 279. One of the highest contact rates going in baseball. When he swings, he usually makes contact. And he makes contact there, a single to center field. So Span with 16 stolen bases now resides at first base and that'll bring up Anthony Rendon. He noted I'm sure when we went over the lineup that Bryce Harper's not in the lineup. He's perfectly healthy. He's been struggling a little bit against left handed pitching so he's been given the night off at least initially by Matt Williams. Well, when you're looking at going up against three left-handers in a row for Matt Williams, he's got to pick a night to try to get Danny Espinosa in the lineup. Well, he wanted to keep Ryan Zimmerman in there because Zimmerman's been on fire. And it's easier to put Zimmerman in left field, put Rendon, who's a very good glove man, at third, and you bring in Danny Espinosa, who struggles with the bat, but he can really pick it at second, and you have a sinker baller on the mound and Doug Fister. Well, and he's a better right-handed hitter than he is a left-handed hitter. 
Yeah, it's, uh, it's been a tough go for Espinosa, particularly on the left side. As we'll show you when it comes to bat. This is what makes this Washington lineup a little unique when you're hitting Anthony Rendon, who's 279, 13 home runs, 53 RBI, second, because he's not your prototypical guy where he's going to bunt a lot, try to hit and run. He's going to try to hit it into the gaps or over the wall. And more teams are doing that. You know how Walt started this year with uh, Kadir there. There's one on first not to be able to double up Rendon. He's an athletic kid. So he'll trade places with Span, one out, and that'll bring up Jason Worth. Yeah, it's time for the McDonald's McCafe pitch menu. Now at McDonald's, you can enjoy a sweet, creamy McCafe iced coffee. You know, fastball, slider, curveball, splitter mix for Franklin Morales. That slider was the last pitch he threw to Rendon to get the ground ball outs, and that's a that's part of the reason why the opponent's batting average is 237 because he can keep it down. It's sharp. It's late and it's it's hard to hit or get that line drive stroke. You end up beating it into the ground more often than not. So here's worth two for five the double to win the ball game yesterday for Washington. They took two out of three from Milwaukee. He looks like he walked off that Geico commercial <laughs> that from about six commercial. months ago. <laughs> well, yesterday for Jason Wirt. They throw him the game in the top of the ninth and allow Milwaukee to tie it up, and then he doubles to Chris Davis in left field. And Doan scores all the way from first. Yeah, Bob Henley, the third base coach, said he was sending him no matter what. 1 0 on Worth's in there, 1 and 1. There's Bob Henley, first year uh, third base coach at the big league level. I'd say he was in a fight with his barber. I don't think he, he knows his no. barber. 2 and 1. It's a new look these days. Well, I think Doug Marino's doing it. Dougie's done. Dougie's was a trendsetter, and these guys are all just following Marino. So he's ahead there of his time. <laughs> I've done the anti-Marino. You going the other way? Yeah. What do you think? That's sure. at the top of the strike zone, two and two. Well, both strikes uh, in this at bat to Jason Worth have been at the top of the Ford strike zone. It's the second, fourth pitch. I mean, Worth didn't like it. You probably don't want to pitch there all night long. See if he goes to that back foot slider, two and two. Well, he has him set up for it if he wants to throw it. Curveball got him, runner going, not going to get Rendon, but he got the strike out of Worth. Pretty pitch from Frankie. So with two outs, Rendon at second, and Adam LaRoche will come up. We'll trade that stolen base for this strikeout on the Mike Shaw Subaru Supermo. They tied him up in knots. With the with the curveball or slider, you have to wait back more, so you can't get any momentum on your throw. And Moline had to wait back to swing, throw around Jason Worth, everything allowing Rendon to slide in for his ninth stolen base. So here's LaRoche, 277, 12 home runs. He's driven in 48. Getting out of that wide open stance. And he takes a ball on the outside or off the outside corner. Chris Conroy is calling balls and strikes tonight. The crew chief is Jerry Meals. Jerry's at first base. Paul Emmel's at second. Jordan Baker is at third. Here's Jerry. Jerry's been around a long time. Two and out. Oh. There's a guy for Toronto a few years back that stood wide open. Batista. Jose Batista. I don't know yeah. stance here. Even more than than Adam LaRoche, but he does get back to at least parallel. He'll take that right foot, get it back into that area. Go way back. Remember Richie Hebner. Hit of a wide yes. open stance. 
there's nothing wrong with the wide open stance because it helps get the, the eyes focusing back out towards the pitcher. But you have to get your hips closed back to the pitcher and, and able to swing. Now this is the guy you want if you're Frankie in that. LaRoche is left handed Zimmerman on deck is the hottest hitter in this Washington lineup and he hits from the right side and he's always hit well at Coors Field. He's 0 for 5 against Morales. 3 and 1 on LaRoche. And he lost him. So now they're 2 on for Zimmerman. Now Ryan Zimmerman is having a big July. He's driven in 15 runs in the month of July. In fact, since June 30th, he's hitting 418. A combination of Zimmerman and Jason Worth in July. They've driven at 35. That's the best tandem in baseball. Even better than the Angels, uh, Albert Pujols and Mike Trout, who uh, threw some bows and arrows at uh, <laughs> Fernando funny, Rodney last night. I loved it. I did too. You know, if you're going to do those antics, expect them back. Absolutely. That pitch just missed. So Conroy's calling the pitchers north and south, evidently not east and west. Well, it's no coincidence that the Nationals are playing better because Zimmerman's hitting. Hard on the ground, but right at Arenado. He's got time. And over to Ben Paulson to end the inning. So a solid start for Franklin Morales. It's out of the little traffic jam. Start against Doug Fister, who beat them a couple of weeks ago in our nation's capital. Charlie Blackman's going to lead things off. He brings a 305 average into the ball game tonight. 14 home runs. He's driven in 52. Josh Rutledge again will bat second. He had a two-run home run last night in the first against the Pirates. Corey Dickerson will bat third. Cargo slides to cleanup. Then Nolan Arenado, Ben Paulson in his big league debut will bat sixth. Willine Rosario, DJ LeMahieu, and Franklin. Morales against the uh, six foot eight inch Doug Fister. Eight two of the two nine oh ERA. His last loss was back on June fifteenth. Four starts since then. Three and zero. Oh. How about this number right there? Eight walks for Doug Fister. So you're going to get something in the zone. Eighty eight to eighty nine miles an hour. But the difference with Fister than a lot of sinker ball guys, he's not afraid to come up and throw you the four seamer letter high. Yeah, he'll get strikeouts up in the zone, which is unusual for a sinker ball guy. His first pitch was in there. Those numbers brought to you by Inova Cancer Care, painless outpatient treatment of prostate cancer. Visit InovaCC.com. One ball, one strike. And that last pitch to Charlie was the pitch I was referencing. 
I mean, you're so conditioned to look down, get the ball down into the zone, and then he comes up and it surprises you. This ball's ripped toward the gap in right center. It's going to run all the way to the wall. Worth a pluck it off there. Charlie with a leadoff double. And he's in a good space offensively. I was just watching him run after having to come out of the game on Saturday. Wasn't sure if he's going to be able to go on Sunday. He says he was. Change up away from him. Stays parallel through the zone on the Mike Shaw Subaru Super Mo. But then watch him run. There's no hesitation. He's not favoring that foot at all. And it was a nasty rollover on that Pittsburgh game when they went that back foot and all the weight just transferred. Thought about those ligaments. I don't mind that Rutledge tried idea. that. It's a good idea. He's trying to get him to third base any way possible. And if you feel more comfortable bunting him over as opposed to trying to stay inside a pitch. And that's not a sign from Stu Cole who got it from Walt. That, that's a, I'm doing it on my own because I feel comfortable laying it down to third to get Charlie there. And if it works out, maybe I get a base hit. If not, it's a sacrifice. You can see him waiting on that pitch. 0 and 2. Here's what he did yesterday afternoon in his first at bat. It's our big hit brought to you by Mako, the company that repairs all kinds of hits. He can do that. I mean, he's got legitimate pop. Check out your local Mako for collision repairs and auto pay for as low as 449. Visit Mako.com today. And a strike out of Rutledge, and he got him up in the zone. Which is where he gets a lot of his strikeouts. So with one out, Blackman still standing at second base, and that'll bring up Corey Dickerson. We'll see that bat. He did keep you up at night as a player. He had a guy at second base, and he didn't get the job done. Moving over to third. Dickerson pinch hit in the seventh inning, and Walk stayed in the game last night or yesterday. That was his only plate appearance. See how the curveball does for Fister in the slider because he has never pitched here at Coors Field. Blackman and he'll get to third before the throw. So with two outs, he's at third base for Carlos Gonzalez. We haven't taken a look at the uh, Nationals defensively. Brought to you by Excel Energy. Visit responsiblebynature.com today to learn more. Zimmerman's in left field. It's a lot of room to cover. He moves okay. He can't throw though. Denard Span at center. Jason Worth in right. Rendon's been very comfortable at third. Desmond at short is very good. Espinosa, great glove at second. LaRoche, solid at first. Good infield. And Wilson Ramos is behind the plate. Cargo, since coming off the disabled list, just five for 25. Only one hit in the Pittsburgh series. Now it was a big one. He had a two run home run on Saturday to get the Rockies a two to one lead in the seventh. Unfortunately, Rockies would cough up that lead and leads in all three ball games late. Just noticed today in batting practice he was really working on staying behind the ball where his head wasn't traveling as far. But even that was an awkward swing. Yeah. It was a hesitation swing. Two and one, a ribby out there for Cargo if he can throw out a hit. He lost a grip on the bat again. Most guys, when they lose a hand, it's the top hand. Cargo, always. through the years, always loses the bottom hand. 
it's really hard to explain why that would happen. Your, your top hand, you see, because when you make contact, a lot of times guys will release that. But for Cargo, because he keeps it so down on the palm, that's why he doesn't have that, that edge of the bat to hit that area. But that's something that he's worked on this offseason because he had hand problems last year. It's three and two on Cargo. Fister going to give in here with first base open, even though it's early in the game. He got him with a changeup. In the inning, the Rockies got a leadoff double from Blackman. He's stranded at third. We'll go to the second, no score. Washington will be Ian Desmond, Wilson Ramos, and Danny Espinosa, 6, 7, and 8 against Franklin Morales. Tweet your question using the hashtag Toyota Talk, and we'll answer as many questions as we can during the fifth inning. Yeah, little things have plagued the Rockies this year. Not to pick on Josh Rutledge, but you can't have an empty at bat there after no. the leadoff double, especially against a guy that this is Nolan Ryan out there. No, he's he not. Doesn't, he's not a big strikeout guy. No, less than a, a strikeout per or half a strikeout per inning. He's 45 and 78 innings. But then it, it sets it up too because then Corey hits the fly ball to right field. Well, he doesn't get the sack fly in the RBI, and you're not ahead one nothing. Just little things. 2 and 0 on Ian Desmond. He's always hit well against the Rockies. 348 with seven home runs in 32 career games against Colorado. Hit a home run in Washington. He has a bullet single to left to begin the second inning. Desmond, a guy also who can run. He's got 10 stolen bases. 50 for 59 now. Make that 51 for for 60 in stolen bases. It's a really high rate. Success rate. Desmond, each of the last two years, stole 21 bases. Ramos has been hurt this year. He has only three home runs, but don't be fooled. He's got a lot of natural power. He is a big, strong guy. He got hurt on opening day. He was played seven innings and was hurt. It stinks to get hurt at any time, especially in the opener. Off the end of the bat, shallow left or Medium range left field to be more accurate. Dickerson has a one out, and that'll bring up 
Espinosa. Subaru brings you the manager's challenge. If there's a questionable call, instant replay will be used. Brought to you by Subaru. Love, it's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. Walt Weiss and Matt Williams. Those two were basically the two finalists for the Rockies' job two years ago. The Rockies had a difficult choice to make, and they went with Walt Weiss. They liked both guys quite a bit. And then a year later, when Davey Johnson retired, Washington hired Matt Williams. This is on the ground at third. Could be two. Here's one on the first double play. That's a great turn. Started by Nolan Arenado. Five, four, three. There was nothing routine about having to make this throw across his body, Jeff. No, he, he makes a strong throw, allowing DJ to complete the double play. Nationals and the Rockies. Doug Fister is on the hill, six foot eight. Drew and Jeff have been talking about him. Unorthodox delivery. Blackman got a hit off him in the first inning. Cargo struck out. Those two talk about his motion. He's really long and tall. So he kind of like coils up, and then it's like elbows and knees, and everything comes at you, and, and nothing straight. So uh, he knows what he's doing. He's got some sink and movement, and uses both sides of the plate. It's kind of weird, you know. That's why he's really successful because, you know, his delivery is different than everybody else. Just a long arm. Like you said, too, he's not overpowering. He's 89, 90, a lot of commando walks, so a little bit of a different guy. Yeah, but those guys are some of the toughest to hit at times, Mark. Just because you, that ball gets on you so quick, you're trying to find where the window, where that ball comes out of. Well, here comes the big league debut of Ben Paulson in front of his uh, mother, his father, and another uh, a bunch of other important people to him. He was told yesterday morning that he was going to the big leagues by Glenn Allen Hill. And he takes his first big league pitch for a strike on the outside corner. Trying to calm all the nerves. star season for the Sky Sox in Triple A. He's hit 15 home runs down there. 291, 57 RBIs and 95 ball games. 24 doubles also. That's inside. Two and one. Well, he just played in the Triple A All-Star game alone. Representative for the Sky Sox was one for two in that ball game. I know he impressed Walt during spring training. He swung it well during the spring. And a base hit in his first big league appearance. That a baby. EY there to greet him. 
That's awesome. That is awesome. I got goosebumps for it. Remember that feeling. Those guys, we, they'd be excited to be up there and, and try to pull everything, but not Paulson. He takes that ball the other way and nice line drive. He's in the record book yes, now. Yes, he is. Strike on the outside corner to Willene Rosario. Got congratulations from a guy with quite a few hits and standing next to him, Adam LaRoche. Ball to center field right at Denard Span. Two outs. That'll bring up DJ LeMahieu. He also becomes the 337th player to record a hit as a Colorado Rocky. He's got an interesting story that will. Divulged throughout the evening. Played his college baseball at Clemson. And his hitting coach when he was there was his dad, Tom Reginus. You say, well, different last name. Tom had a relationship late in college with uh, Ben's mom. They never got married, but he obviously stayed in touch. And they've become closer and closer through the years. His dad's now the head coach. At Winthrop University, North Carolina. Yeah, and as the story goes, when when he was being recruited out of high school, they the coaches from Georgia Tech said, "Hey, you know, if you if you don't want him there at Clemson, we're going to take him. So you better sign him." And they sure did, and it was the right move. And again, you know, mom's here. She lives in uh, the Atlanta area, Alpharetta, Georgia, and. Uh, and dad obviously lives in, in Carolina and dad is uh, here as well. DJ hits a pop fly to shallow right and it's dropped out there by Espinosa and DJ in the second. That's a ball that is kind of in no man's land but in a perfect world you'd like your right fielder worth to field it. Yeah, but he was playing so deep and then just jogged in after it. He didn't come on a sprint. But second baseman and shortstops, when they're going back and they're having to look over their shoulder, you just keep waiting for that outfielder to call you off. You say, I need some help here. But you see plenty of guys do basket catches over the shoulder, but it's not an easy play. I mean, Worth kind of pulls up. He didn't keep going. And then it'll go down as an error on Danny Espinosa, his fifth of the season. And Frankie with the big leg left and a solid rip there. Remember when he came up in 07, he could really swing it. I told this story before, but when he was a kid coming out of Venezuela and was signed. There were many scouts who wanted him to be an outfielder. Well, it's just like Carlos Gonzalez. Many people wanted him to be a pitcher. Yeah. <laughs> Guess what? When you're really gifted, there's a lot of things you could do on a baseball diamond. Now, he doesn't swing it as well now, and it's just be, he was in the American League for a yes. long period of time, and then he became more of a reliever, certainly, than a starter. Hasn't had a ribby since 09. He's due. He went. So Morales goes down. The error on the pop up does not hurt the Nationals. We'll go to the third inning. The Rockies nothing and the Nationals nothing. Ben Paulson's first big league hit.
where Coors Field rocks in the dance. There's Ben Paulson. He gets a knock at his first A.B. I'm sitting next to his dad, Tom, and his grandfather, George. So, Tom, you coached him in college. What about this day? I'm sure this is uh, a day you, you hoped for and waited for. Uh, pretty special. When he called me yesterday, uh, I was actually driving home from a recruit's house doing a home visit, and he called me and he said uh, he, uh, he got called up, so it was a very special moment. And then uh, actually this afternoon when he texted me, he told me he's starting. was even a better moment. So it's it's been a, the last 24 hours have been a, a coach slash dad's dream. He was in Memphis. Where were you on your drive? Uh, I was right outside of uh, Greenville, South Carolina. So you got here from that part of the country, and his grandfather, George, got here from Wisconsin, correct? Wisconsin, and Ben was born in Plymouth, Wisconsin, where we live. So a proud day for you? It's an extremely proud day. What a wonderful young person he is. Who's to your right? This is Terry, Terry Westenfeld. And Terry's one of his coaches from? He was one of his coaches way back uh, before in the high school days. In Wisconsin? No, down in uh, Georgia. Georgia, right. And then he ended up at Clemson. What else did he tell you about getting called up? How did he, did he break the news to you in any unique unique way? No, just on the phone. He's not a big uh, guy that likes talking on the phone. We, we text a lot and I watch a lot of his games. But when he calls, it's usually pretty important. And when I saw him, his, his number come up on my phone uh, yesterday afternoon, I had a feeling, I had a feeling that uh, something like this was going to go on. Because I know he's, he's had a, a great year. He's put up great numbers all year. He's been pretty consistent. So it's just a matter of time. We just watch him get an assist there. Great to talk to you, Tom, George, and everybody enjoy the night. Thank you. Appreciate right. it. Guys? Yeah, that's uh, terrific seeing his dad and his granddad here. And that's textbook, man. Stayed back, hit it off his body line the other way. Well, and not to get over amped in your first at bat where you want to try to hit a home run. Now, I know it was going through your mind a moment ago. He had one of those sticks, got a little slow <laughs> tweener Stay hops down. where you can, that's an easy one to, you know, because right. you you're thinking about it. It's not yeah. getting to you fast enough. Right. It's like, hurry up, ball. And I've done it where I pulled my glove up too soon. And it goes right between your legs, but it didn't for Ben. And he got the first one out of the way. So he's got his first hit and his first ground ball. That's right. One out to Nard Span, who singled to center field in the first. Surprised by the span with Washington last year. That single, just his second career hit against the Rockies. Looks up and in. Ball, one strike. Nationals, a couple weeks ago at Nationals Park, swept the Rockies. Ben Paulson making his major league debut. He becomes the ninth Rocky this year to make his major league debut. There are only two other teams that can say that the Tigers and the Rangers, and the two teams that have been decimated the most in baseball this year by injuries, have been the Rangers and the Rockies. Two and two. It's not a list you want to try to be on. You're one of the nine, and you say, I, I've worn a big league uniform. You're, you're excited. Rockies have played 43 different players now with Paulson going tonight. The most they've ever had in a season is 55, 2011. The least was their second year, surprisingly. Only 36 players in 1994. Boy, that's a that's yeah, well, a real number. You would have thought number. it would have been a much higher number back then. This next year, in year three, the Rockies were in the postseason. It's a two-two. Nationals right now lead the National League in run differential. They're third in baseball. They're plus 65. They scored 402. They've allowed just 337. 
Oakland's number one. This is amazing. That, that, They're plus 150. Next are the Angels at plus 90. Think about that, plus well, 150. Well, think about what those two teams are doing in the AL West. They're battling it out for supremacy, and then the Nationals have the best winning percentage-wise in the National League. I mean, they're 10 games over 500 at 53 and 43, but the win percentage is 552. Highest mark in the NL. Three and two, that breaking ball just missed to span. And that misses as well. So it's the second walk allowed by Frankie, and that'll bring up Rendon. Time for the Steel T heating and air cool stat. Never a trip charge for a repair. It's a $69 value. Steel T, the T stands for trust. Go to SteelT.com. Anthony Rondon's played 190 games. Nolan Arenado, 195. Now Rondon plays second as well. And their average is almost identical. The home run's pretty similar. Ribby's similar. Fielding percentage, very similar. Well, that's why Rendon was up for that final all-star spot and Nolan if he hadn't gotten hurt was up for an all-star berth all right we got to go back change a little scorekeeping if you keep a book with us at home that pop fly to shallow right field uh -huh. that Rend actually that uh, Espinosa couldn't catch is now being ruled a double so uh, LeMahieu gets a double Snap they're throw. saying no harm, no foul since nobody scored. It doesn't hurt anybody. Guess so. <laughs> DJ will take it. He'll get a double. No error for Espinosa. Strike on Rendon. Six pick in the draft a couple of years ago. He didn't play a whole lot of minor league baseball. He got to the Nationals quickly. The way he hits, no reason for him to waste those hits down in double A or A ball. 79 minor league games. Bouncer to short. Rutledge, good feed. That all, that's all they'll get. Wasn't hit hard enough to turn two. Two gone, and that'll bring up Worth. Second time tonight for Josh Rutledge to take the ground ball off the bat of Rendon and get the force at second. Yeah, virtually identical type of baseballs also. He just not hit real hard where you couldn't turn it. Worth struck out on a good curveball his first time up. Worth came up. First saw him in a Dodger uniform, then it was on to Philadelphia. And he earned the big paycheck, the long term contract with his work in Philadelphia. That's why Washington tabbed him. Comes from a baseball family, though. His dad, or his granddad, Ducky Schofield, played 19 big league seasons, and his uncle Dick Schofield, who I played against. I remember Dick. 14. I don't, I don't remember Ducky, to be frank. I don't remember Frank either. <laughs> but there wasn't a Frank, there was a Ducky. That's right. One ball, one strike. Base hit to right. A lot of people run there, but you don't well, run on Carlos Gonzalez. 
and it was just quickly shut it down. Yeah, Matt Williams was talking about the arm now in right field with Carlos being out there. This time it was a slider that did not bite. It stayed flat. Jason Worth hits it to right field, but he was talking with the the media from New York today. And they were asking him about playing here at this big field and he referenced, well, you know what, they've got a different right fielder now, Carlos Gonzalez, and probably not gonna be running quite as much because of it. Because he goes, I saw it for those years when I was down in Arizona and I was a third base coach. Ball one on LaRoche. So the guy I was talking about in the first inning with Toronto, Tony Batista. Tony That's Howell. right. Yeah, he had the wide open. He had stand. the wide open stance. And again, he falls behind LaRoche, and again, not that LaRoche is uh, a slouch. He's not, but left on left, you'd rather have LaRoche at the plate with some traffic than Ryan Zimmerman, who's on deck. The road scuffling in July 7 for 50 and Zimmerman one of the hottest hitters in the month of July. Gets all the second half action on MLB.TV premium the number one live streaming sports service watch every out of market game live and true HD on over 400 devices. In there two and one. Well, again at the top of the fourth strike zone and. Chris has called that here in the first three innings. So you know that now is a hitter from both sides. And again, Franklin in one of those three one counts with Adam LaRoche at second base, Anthony Rendon, Jason Worth at first. No score. Top of three at Coors Field. It's an often repeated phrase when people are talking about Franklin Morales. Walt Weiss was asked about Franklin Morales, and I've heard him say this a bunch, and I know I've used this term a bunch, and that is he's a he's a great competitor. And there, there are nights that he walks too many guys. There are nights he gives up home runs, but he will always compete. Three and two struck him out. So he comes all the way back and strikes out Adam LaRoche with two aboard. Middle of three, no score.
you by the Ford Focus. Big MPGs and fun to drive. Ford, go further. And by McDonald's. Now at McDonald's, you can enjoy a sweet, creamy McCafe iced coffee. Very pleasant night in lower downtown Denver. It's cooled off into the uh, 70s after a high close to 100 today. Charlie Blackman takes strike one. Charlie had a double in the bottom of the first. Unfortunately, the Rockies could move him no further than third. And this one is a towering pop up that's playable and sure right <laughs> works. And you know what? Don't worry, I got this one. And he calls off Danny Espinosa. About the same area it was for the double DJ's ball. Who wants tacos when the Rockies score seven or more? Go to participating Colorado Taco Bell locations the next day. Do it between four and six to get your Rockies taco special. He's laughing. He goes, where was that help the first inning? Yeah. The second inning the first time. One out. Josh Rutledge hitting second for the eighth time this year takes a strike. Two and one. Doug Fister, six foot eight, one of four active pitchers that are six eight or taller. Chris Young is number one at six ten. And this is a big chopper to third. Easy play for Rendon. Two outs. Two got Corey Dickerson in a broken bat fly ball to right. Take his turn. So pie. Break down the delivery for Doug Fister. As mentioned, he's six foot eight, so he'll he'll come just like a normal person will. But watch where he drops the ball right back down into this area. When he gets ready to deliver, but the ball's coming from back up here. So you see it, that hand drop down, but then trying to find the window of where that ball's coming from. That's what makes it hard to pick it up. And it's dropped in there for a strike. Fister won 14 games last year with Detroit. Which is his career best. And he strikes out. Dickerson, four strikeouts, three innings of work for Doug Fister.
see Ryan Zimmerman, Ian Desmond, Wilson Ramos for the Nationals. It's time for the injury report brought to you by University of Colorado Health. And we focus in tonight. I mean, you could pick any injury you want. The Rockies have had so many of them. Troy Tulowitzki left the game in the fourth inning Saturday. Uh, an upper left by first uh, called a cramp. He's still very sore. Not doing anything today. He'll resume baseball activities tomorrow. And we'll see if... Uh, we see him tomorrow or Wednesday. Thursday is an off day before the Pirates come in over the weekend. Troy did not play yesterday. Breaking ball for a strike. Here's the injury again, just trying to leg out a slow ground ball. Yeah, and after about a third of the way down the, the line, he pulls up. You no, know, you. you Players know when their body's not right and it's not working to shut it down. Don't risk that injury, push it even harder. Now the leadoff man has been on in three out of the four innings as Zimmerman strokes a single to left. That'll bring up Desmond. This guy's power. It's a big swing. Yeah, it, that's what I mean. He swings from the heels. He's looking to turn and burn, pull something down the into the left field line in the corner. And if he hits it the other way, a lot of times it's a, it's an accident. He's not trying to hit it that way. It's just the ball's away from him. He's dragging the barrel through the zone. Yeah, I don't think people realize. How big this guy is. You know, we talk about how big and strong Troy is to Lewitsky is shortstop. Troy's 6'3, about 215 pounds. That's exactly what Ian Desmond is. He's 6'3, 215 pounds. And similar to Troy, he is really well put together. Yeah, and really the uniform doesn't do him justice. I was down by the, the batting cage today watching him just his forearms while he was swinging that bat. You can tell some guys make it look easy, other guys are just like it's it's a chore. Yeah, the bat's light in his hands. Yeah. And he's a great young man. He is, he is one of the leaders of this team. He's always accessible. You know, the guys within the Nationals rave about him, and you and I have had opportunities over the years to visit with him. He's a great kid. Asked him about uh, his brother-in-law, Josh Renke, Renke, uh, Renke today. And talks to him all the time. Renke's in AAA. And they've made him a starting pitcher with Washington. This ball's left up and it's hit to deep left and it's going to get on out of here. Renicky, or excuse me, Desmond hits the two run home run, his 17th of the year. There's that easy power I was talking about where he's just trying to turn on everything. For Desmond now, that's his 17th home run, 62nd RBI, moves him into fourth place in the National League in RBIs. Leads all big league shortstops and ribbies ahead of Troy in that department. Or a slider, and he drops a back leg. Look at the head while it positions to follow the barrel. Unlike a lot of hitters, he kept keeps both hands on the back. And that's up the middle, a base hit for Ramos. So a single, a two-run home run, and a single here against Morales in the fourth. It's 19 home runs allowed by Frankie now in 90 innings, which... That's that's a really high number and 15 of those 19 have come against right-handed batters The next highest number is De La Rosa. He's given up a dozen home runs in 108 and two-thirds Danny Espinosa hit into a 5-4-3 double play his first time up, and this ball's driven to left center field. And this one's going to touch down and skip against the wall. And a green light for Ramos. Here's the throw toward the plate. It's offline. 
Backed up by Morales. Run scoring double for Espinosa. It's three to nothing, Washington. And that breaks an 0 for 27 streak for Espinosa with that double. That's a slump. Fourth RBI hitting right handed for Espinosa. Hits it out to 415 feet. Dead center field on the Mike Shaw Subaru Supermo. Right on the sweet spot of the bat, hits at the base of the wall. No kickback. So it just has to wait till Charlie picks it up. That allows Ramos to score from first. Doug Fister lays down the bunt, and that's a high throw. Off the bag is Paulson at 6 4. He or excuse me, it's DJ at first. He's six four. He couldn't keep a foot on the bag. That'll be a throwing error on Morales, and nobody out still. First and third, Jimmy Wright running to the mound. I'll show you why and what happened. Now, as soon as this ball is laid down, Franklin is pointing the third that he's going to get it. He wants to throw to Nolan, and they probably have time. To get it, but Nolan wasn't back at the back, so he points over to first base. And then this pulls DJ off. You have to come off and get the ball. Try to stretch and reach at the same time on the Mike Shaw Subaru Super Mo Super Mo, and that's now six straight games that the Rockies have committed an error. Fister gets credit for a sacrifice. Five straight have reached here in the fourth. A moment ago is a nothing nothing game. Strike on span. Have been pitching well at home. His last five starts at Coors Field, a 3.45 ERA, just nine walks against 28 strikeouts. Rockies have won four of those five starts. Up three runs on seven hits here with nobody out in the fourth. Where's that pitch? This was just in enough. Ford strike zone, but Chris has not called East and West today. That's in two and one. Span with a base hit and a walk in the game. He's reached in 17 consecutive ball games. Span. Well, three hundred and now thirty seven at bats is only grounded into three double plays. And two. Span currently leads all big league leadoff hitters with 35 extra base hits, three more than Charlie. That one kind of surprised me with the number yes. of extra base hits Blackman's produced. That's strike three. Good pitch. Morales ever need that first out of the inning. Span was looking for the slider. Got the express. 
Just have to walk back to the dugout. Four seam fastball. Well received from Willene. Outside corner. Big strikeout. Two and out. Jerry's battle in the sun at first, trying to also call whether they win on the swing. Anthony Rendon twice has bounced to short. Espinosa at third, Fister at first, and Franklin just threw it away. That'll cost him another run. In fact, Fister is going to end up at third base. That's just, just bad baseball. There's no other way to describe it. I'm not sure why he was throwing over with the pitcher there. He's not Doug going Fister anywhere. He's not going anywhere. You know, two errors this inning on Franklin. Came into the ball game with just one on the season. Everybody's having to battle the sun. You throw you know, across. The, it, it, and that that supports the point even more. Why would you throw over when the sun is in a kid's eye who's been in the big leagues for three innings? With the pitcher with standing the pitcher. there. Yeah, I mean the last thing the pitcher's thinking is try to get a big secondary lead. The infield in four runs in the inning, and Rendon will drive in a fifth here in all likelihood. Well, actually, you know what? The way uh, that's a great throw. Good deep by Blackman. He stayed behind that. When the ball came off the bat, he thought it was a pretty deep center field. It actually wasn't all that deep, and Blackman comes up. It fires home to keep Fister. Well, Fister yeah, Fister would have been out by. 10 12 feet. Charlie waits, waits, and then he has momentum. The other thing, too, is he caught the ball on the left side of his body. So it's a short transfer from your glove to your hand, and you get rid of it in two steps. I mean, how about that throw on the money? Jason Worth at the plate. Chad Bettis is up in the Rockies bullpen. Worth the eighth man to come up for the Nationals here in the fourth inning. Two and oh. Six pitches for Frankie. The Roach on deck. And ball four worth on four pitches walks. That's four walks allowed. And yeah, let me correct that. That's three walks allowed. So Adam LaRoach with runners at first and third. Wells Fargo customers get your two for one Rockies club level seats today by going to wellsfargo.com slash Rockies Wells Fargo Bank member FDIC. Very patient. If you don't throw him a strike, even though he's a you know, big slugger, he's hit 
25 plus home runs for four different teams. He'll throw the bat toward the on deck circle and jog to first. Yeah, he hasn't hit as many home runs as Frank Thomas, but Frank Thomas was that way. You know, if you didn't throw it right where he wanted it into that zone, he would take the walk, he'd go down to first. It's a rare combination for a big guy to do that. Fans, you don't want to miss the action at Coors Field when the Pittsburgh Pirates come to town this weekend, Friday through Sunday. Get your tickets today. Go to Rockies.com or call Rock or 303 Rockies for ticket availability. One and one on LaRoche. He looks like he's clean shaven compared to Worth. What do you think? Oh, yeah. His hair's a little shorter. The beard's trimmed up. Bouncer to first. Paulson has it. That ends the inning. Four runs come in. Three base hits. Check it. Four base hits. Two run home run by Desmond. There were a pair of errors on Morales. Now 4 nothing. that's leading the Rockies. Ben Paulson making his Major League debut. We always like to hear the story about how they got called up. He was with the Sky Sox. They were in Memphis. Glenn Allen Hills, the manager of the Sky Sox, texted him, said, I need you in my hotel room to talk about hitting. Paulson said, wait, I haven't even had breakfast. Can I come? No, 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 no. you got to get here to talk about hitting. And so he showed up. You know, after he said you have to come to my room immediately, uh, he knew something was up. He just didn't know what it was, and it, uh, it was, I was shell shocked. It was uh, I didn't know what to to cry or to to laugh or just to do anything. It was just one of those like surreal moments that you know you're never gonna forget. That's in his memory bank for the rest of his life, and he'll hit this inning after getting a hit in his first AB, guys. Yeah, and Dave Hadgett came in the room also. He's the trainer for the uh, Sky Sox, longtime uh, trainer. And it's a special moment. Cargo's going to lead off here. The Rockies playing uphill. They're down four to nothing in the fourth. Cargo struck out with Blackman at third to end the first inning. Here's the 1 0 from Fister. And a good eye, 2 0. It's always fun to hear the stories of how managers break it to the, to the players. And I'll tell you what, there's not been a guy that's played AAA the last couple of years that does not rave about Glenn Allen Hill and playing for him. For the Sky Sox. Look at that. That is a launch. That was a 2 0 changeup. 2 and 1. Hopefully, everybody's okay. Well, again, he loses the control of the bat. This time it was the 
again the bottom hand came off. Goes into the stands. Yeah, and unfortunately. That lady got hit. Pretty solid. Two and two. Two two. Cargo pops it up foul ground. I think it's going to get out of play. Jeff had an interesting conversation with Vinny Castilla before the game around the batting cage today. And the same exact thing that he told me, which I'll relate to you in a moment, was repeated by FP Santangelo about 20 minutes later in a separate conversation, talking about cargo and and you know trying to remove the rust. Nolan Arenado, you come back mid-season. And they said that's the hardest time to do it because everybody is at their best right now, especially the pitchers. They're in, it's midseason. They're truly in, we use that term, throw yes. it around. They're in midseason form. It's easier in April and even early May than it is right now. Just for that reason, because the pitchers have been continually to do their work, whether it's in between starts, out there making starts at the big leagues. And people say, well, yeah, you went on a rehab, but it, you don't have the same adrenaline rush when you go down on a rehab as a big leaguer. So you'll go down there, you'll get your work in. You're not facing big league pitchers, but it's just not the same. It's all, it's almost like a spring training game at times. Yeah, and F.P. Santangelo played in the big leagues. is uh, on the broadcast with our, our friend Bobby Carpenter uh, to the left of us with the Nationals. Bryce Harper's going through the same thing, and he went down to the minor league. Hit, remember, we, yeah. we were there. He hit three home runs the right. day before, and then he arrives. He's ready to go, and and he is scuffled well, because everybody is at their sharpest right now. Yeah, I mean, for Bryce Harper coming back, he's hit 220 in 15 games. Nolan said about 200 now in his 13 ball games. He's a bouncer to third. That's a great feat. Five, four, three on the turn, led by Anthony Rendon. This graphic we're going to show you illustrates that point. You have two great players, Bryce and Nolan, what they were doing before they were injured. Everything's going great. Ah, but look what happened since they returned. Pitchers are doing their thing. You're finally trying to find your timing. It's not there. And then you start to press. And then you go, well, I need to get a hit here. Or I haven't gotten a hit a couple games. I need to get four tonight. Two outs, Ben Paulson, who had a base hit, a line shot, his first big league at bat to left field. There's Harper again, not in the lineup tonight. He's fine, just not playing against the lefty Morales. And this ball is lined toward Worth, who'll get over and make the catch in right center field. We'll go to the fifth inning. 4 nothing Washington.
Washington as we go to the top of the fifth inning. It's our Twitter talk inning. Uh, for you to tweet us your Rockies questions right now. And also you can tweet us your Rockies fan photos using the hashtag CO fan photo. Morales will face Ryan Zimmerman, Ian Desmond, and Wilson Ramos in the fifth inning. All four runs scored last inning by Washington. Four runs, a couple of errors. One of the uh, four runs unearned. Frankie had two errors in that inning. Zimmerman one for two. He singled and scored in the fourth. Takes a fastball for a strike at 89. Zimmerman came into the game with a 368 average at Coors Field. First question tonight. How many television cameras are at your average ball game? We string eight, I believe 18. Is that right? I'm asking uh, Tavis Strand, our producer tonight, Mike Fox, our director. We have 18, including Robos tonight. They're not answering me on the air. They don't have a microphone in front of them. But they could still talk. Oh, yeah. there's Raj and Brian Peters. 17 tonight. Raj and Brian Peters out there. This is a high fly ball to fairly deep center field. Oh, it is different when we're out on the road compared to when we're home. And out on the road, it's anywhere from six to eight cameras that are available to us. And there's, and, and there's some shared cameras also, so it's a little different out on the road. We have a, what's known in the industry as a, as a bigger show when we're at home. There's Bo yeah. McWilliams, who usually brings his tennis racket with him to the uh, or roller blades to work. ballpark. Yeah, that's how he gets home. Sammy Herniason, who's been sitting next to us for decades up here, rides his Harley. Rain or shine. Sam's trying to hide again. He rides it the snow, too. It's kind of fun for us because we'll go by there, Stevie Brown. We'll go by, hey, Stevie, we'll go by um, Sam on the way out and intentionally like spray him when it's raining. <laughs> he doesn't or it's think that's funny, out. though. No, but we, you know, it's kind of, <laughs> if he's going to be foolish enough to ride his Harley in that, we just figure we'll make it a little more entertaining for him. Round ball up the middle and a base hit. So Desmond is three for three, single two run home run and another single. Which batting rules were the original rules for baseball before the American League versus the National League. Well, that I, I think Are there's following? something about the DH. You know what? What rules were followed before the DH came into play? Oh, the DH came in the American League in '73. Ron Bloomberg was the first DH. Pitchers have always hit the National League, going back to 1876. They hit the American League from 1901 to 1972. If that answers your question. Wilson Ramos, one for two. He singled and scored last inning. Arenado's going to have one play. That's the first, and he throws to Paulson. Two outs. A pitcher has to go at least five to qualify for a win. Therefore, why doesn't, why doesn't a pitcher have to go at least five for a loss? Doesn't work that way. <laughs> if you mess up enough in the early innings, they'll hang a loss a on you. Yeah, you don't get a chance. 
dependent on somebody else. And it wouldn't be fair to the other pitcher that's coming in. You have eight runs and two innings. What I do think is unfair is giving a guy a blown save, say in the seventh inning, when he you know comes in, it's three two, he gives up a run, he gets a blown save, but he's not eligible to get a save. Yeah, that one if doesn't he gets make three sense. outs, it should, it should nobody scores. A blown hole type right. of thing. I don't I don't like that. That rule's gonna go to the backstop. That'll be a wild pitch and Desmond will move to third. Rockies, oh. along with the Atlanta Braves, leading the National League in wild pitches. It's the 50th wild pitch this season. I put him on, and that's what Walt is going to elect to do. It's probably be Franklin's last inning, so you're not worried about trying to to extend it. You want to get to the pitcher, get out of this without giving up another run. Bring up Fister as soon as they complete this walk. Yeah, going back to that television question. We're very intelligent about the people we put in different places. We have, honestly, because Denver is such a beautiful place to live, we say this every year, we have some of the best people in the industry. They work regionally and nationally. Well, Sam, and, and our own Sam was just at the at the All Star game. He was he was working uh, for Fox at the Major League All Star game uh, in Minneapolis, and we also, you know, for instance, John and Speedy, who you don't get to see, but they control the Robos, and we did a big background check on them many years ago, and they were two of the best game players, video game players, in the region, and and that's why we don't Hello. ever see them, but they just. Run those robots because their thumbs are, are some of the finest in the industry. This is pulled by Fister and Paulson, and that'll end the inning. There was a hit, an intentional walk, two men left in the fifth. The Nationals leading four to nothing. First Bank game recap. First Bank, the home of free checking, is proud to support the home team. Sign up at efirstbank.com. For nothing, Washington. Ian Desmond, the shortstop for the Nationals, has hit his 17th home run. Danny Espinosa snapped an 0 for 27 slide with an RBI double. All four runs came in the fourth inning for Washington. Ben Paulson in his first major league at bat, lined a single to left field. William Rosario, DJ LeMayhew, in all probability a pinch hitter here in the fifth inning. 
Rockies have been limited to three hits against Doug Fister, who beat the Rockies a couple of weeks ago in Washington. He allowed the Rockies that ball game three runs in seven innings, seven hits that day, no walks. Center field pretty deep, but Span will make the catch one out. Some good questions tonight. We thank you for tweeting us those questions during Toyota Talk. If you want more answers, visit our Facebook page, facebook.com slash rootsports rm. Dodgers are in Pittsburgh tonight. They're in the bottom of the ninth inning. They're defeating the Pirates five to two. Kenley Jansen's in there trying to get the save. Giants are up 7 4 in the bottom of the eighth. Those two teams tied atop the NL West. Did you see Dan Ugla signed a minor league deal with the Giants? I did see that. And uh, the Giants, you know, there's no, said there's no guarantee that he's going to be brought up. DJ bounces it to short. Some more uh, news around the NL West. Matt Kane, boys, had a rough year. Two and seven. So on Mike Kane, he's lost five of six starts. And he's got right elbow inflammation. Second time this year, Kane has been on the DL, and he was never on it before. No, but those are not Matt Kane type numbers. So it tells you something was going on. Well, Frankie, with two outs and nobody on, will hit for himself. Blackman will come up a double and a fly ball to right for Charlie. Johan Flande is going to make the start, by the way, for the Rockies tomorrow. Be opposed by Jordan Zimmerman. Jordan had to come out of his his start right before the All Star game, and it didn't allow him to appear in Minneapolis. Pitching staff for Washington's been outstanding. Heads up. It's pulled foul. They have the number one ERA in baseball at 310. Their starter ERA is 331. And their bullpen ERA is 267. I mean, they're good one through nine. There it is. Band another chance, and that'll end the inning. So we'll move to the sixth. Doug Fister shutting out the Rockies. It's 4 0 Nationals.
Rockies Baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by Five Hour Energy. Five Hour Energy helps recognize those who, despite their own needs, put others first. And by Ram Trucks, the Ram 1500 is Motor Trend's 2014 Truck of the Year and first ever back to back champion. Pretty spot on the Platte River. A lot of characters there throughout the day in front of the REI building. 4 0 Washington. Busy over there with the hot weather. Back a couple years ago, that's where our root sports offices were. So Morales will continue on at the sixth. Denard Span, Anthony Rendon, Jason Wirt, or in other words, the top of the Washington lineup. Rendon, a single, a walk, and a strike, or excuse me, Span, a single, a walk, and a strike, yeah. Red Sox beat up the Jays tonight at Rogers Center 14 to 1. David Ortiz hit two home runs in that game. Does he ever age? He's got 22 <laughs> bombs. Span it hits it at Paulson. One out. It doesn't seem like it. Was it. Two years ago, everybody thought he was done. Right. He had that slow start. Rendon's 0 for 3. Baltimore's got a quick 2 0 start in Anaheim against the Angels, courtesy of a Adam Jones home run. The All Star with his 18. Strike on Rendon. Rendon out of Rice University. Would be a good player and a yes. good student to uh, go to Rice in Houston. Lamar High School down in the Houston area. Rice always year after year they produce some players and they have a great program. I'm wondering, is Lamar High School near Lamar University? Nope. University's in Beaumont, Texas. That's how I said that. Well, you had, you know, that's why they recruited you. you <laughs> correctly pronounced Beaumont. Time for you to tweet us your Rockies fan photos. Use the hashtag CO fan photo for an opportunity to have a show during the upcoming broadcast. Jason Worth, strikeout, single walk. Cuts in there for a strike. We're talking about Jason Worth and his grandpa and his uncle. His mom was also competed in the U.S. Olympic trials in the long jump in the 100 meters. Well, athletic family. Yes. Not a surprise. Their uh, their son is such a talented athlete. Funny how it works, huh? Mm -hmm. DNA. This ball's lined to deep center field. Blackman is going to have to field it on one hop off the wall, and Worth will put it in cruise control. Have a two-out double. Twenty-four double this season for Worth. Watch as the big guy gets his arms extended when he makes contact on the Mike Shaw Subaru Supermo. I mean, this is full extension. And that's when you get the backspin on the baseball. And Charlie takes off after it. And he just has to wait till it bounces off the wall to get it back in. And 
Good curveball on the ground to DJ over to Ben Paulson. That'll end the inning. So a two-out double by Worth. He's left at second base. Middle of six for nothing Nationals. Rutledge, Dickerson, Gonzalez in the sixth inning against Doug Fister. Here's our AT&T fan photo of the game. Well, this one's particularly special for us because this is uh, little Nell V. Hill, our uh, pre and post game producer many a night is Allison V. Hill, and this is uh, her little baby girl. She's beautiful. Tweet your photo to hashtag CEO fan photo for a chance to be shown shown in an upcoming game broadcast brought to you by AT&T. It was just taken yesterday, Nell's birthday. Turned two yesterday. Mm -hmm. Allison working tonight. Yes, she was. I know she did the pregame show. Well, there's Allison right there. Hi, Allison. What Jenny and Jason, they're all getting ready. First Billy. Let's see that picture again. Let's see he's working hard in that booth. Guarantee you one thing, guys. Uh, Billy well, making hand Hirsch, gestures, talking. Hirsch is eating popcorn and <laughs> practicing his grips on his baseball for his comeback. Allison has the computer screen up, but I guarantee there's no baseball on it. This is up the middle of the base set. Jenny. He's making wedding plans. <laughs> and uh, it's Spilly's just trying to entertain. Who's that in front, man? He did, crushing he had, the he's at, he had eaten in like six days. <laughs> Take a breath. Not one of ours. So Rutledge on Dickerson coming up. Dickerson leading baseball in a very important category. He's hitting 400 even with runners on base, period. That's not just runners in scoring position, that's anybody on base. So there's a guy on base right now. Keeps getting enough at bats, and hopefully soon he'll start to be able to qualify for the batting, the batting race. Well, there was some concern with Doug Fister how how far he would be able to go tonight. What was happening because his last start was back on July 9th. So he's had 12 days of rest. And part of the reason he was supposed to throw yesterday, but Gio Gonzalez had to be pushed back on his start because he was not able to make his flight for the workout on Thursday after the All Star game. Usually you'd say rest isn't a bad thing, but. Sicker ballers are often better when their arms a little fatigued. Right, and that's why they were concerned with the 12 days. 
he's looked pretty good tonight. Twenty second in the National League in win percentage behind Kershaw. He gets a ground ball here. Espinosa able to feed Desmond cut down Rutledge one out. Well the winning percentage in the National League Clayton Kershaw at 846 he's 11 and 2 Doug Fisters 8 and 2 Adam Wainwright also on that list Simon they're both 12 and 4 and Kyle Loesch is 10 and 4. Cargo at the plate. Strikeout and a walk tonight for Carlos. Only walk allowed by Fister, who has now walked a whopping nine this year. He came in with the lowest walk per nine inning ratio in the National League, third in all of baseball. Cargo with a base hit up the middle. And Dickerson will go first to third. Fisher looked like he was hurt on that play. He landed awkwardly. A real hard hit off the bat of Carlos. Jammed it, but after the ball goes over the head, Fisher drops to his knee. His right ankle rolls over. He falls onto his backside and grimacing the whole time. There's nothing pretty about that from from Doug Corey sees where the ball is he motors into third. You get this run in Rockies in the last 64 at bats with runners in scoring position just 10 for 64. Only seven runs over the weekend in Pittsburgh. Two on and one out. Here's Arenado. No one takes a strike. Ground ball to short. A 5 4 3 double play. He's over two. 14th game back since coming off the disabled list for Arenado. Doug Fister. Finished up at Fresno State. He got to Merced College first. He played a little first base at Fresno State. His dad played tight end at Fresno State back in the 70s. Dad's a fire captain. Tommy Canley now up for the Rockies in their bullpen. It's the workhorse Tommy. Runner going 2 2, line drive, base hit. Cargo, and now they threw behind him. He's in trouble. He's out at third base. That's the hand. Uh oh. Oh, man. The hand or the shoulder. Took a wide turn around second and Zimmerman, who doesn't throw well, threw behind and then he got cut down going to third. Rockies get a run. 
Seven four five on the put out. It's four to one. Nolan did move up to second. The runner in motion. You try to get on top of the baseball. That's what you want to do as a hitter. You know there's going to be some holes out there. Nolan did. He got on top of this. One back liner to left. Cargo rounds it too far. They're going to throw to Rendon, and then you just can't tell. And Espinosa with the quick relay. That's a second base to the. Well, it might have been his face after the way he went in. I mean, so many different things could have gone wrong, and he kind of rolled up on that yeah. left wrist, and then he went face first. Maybe he got shaken up, and hopefully that's all well, it is. He cut his right hand, his left hand, the one he had surgery on. It oh, plants. Both, yeah, you're right. Both hands, and then the face. Face, plant. then the face plant, and then the fingers jam into the the foot. Of Rendon, who is blocking the bag. I mean, there was a myriad of things that happened there. You know, needs a big bonus. Keith, Keith Duggar, Duggar, Scotty Garrett, Scotty Murayama, the entire training staff for the Rockies. They've been like paramedics. You know, all hands on deck all the time. Let's see if Ben Paulson can throw out a hit. Here in the bottom of the six, cut the deficit to two. Two strike count. Single and a fly ball to right field. On that left wrist, that's the one that that locked up and got bent down. You see the right hand; it's cut. Paulson with a base hit. Arenado around third. He'll score easily. Ben Paulson, second hit in his debut. First big league RBI. And it's four to two. And he did it behind in the count. There's a dad in the golf shirt with the glasses on top of the hat. Grandfather as well. Proud moment. Gets the change up off the end of the bat. He just goes with the pitch. A soft serve to center field. What a debut. Big league hit your first time up. Your third time up after lining out. Your second at bat, you get your first RBI. Steve McCaddy done with his visit. Lee Rosario coming up. Rolling, rolling this one's a drag out for the Rockies to save his keepsakes for Ben Paulson. First big wondering. league hit, first big league ribby. And I was wondering if he was going to use that bat that he got the hit with the first time, the second, the third time, and he did. See guys take it out. Make sure they have that as a keepsake. It's been a difficult year for Willine Rosario. He had that illness and put him on the disabled list. The numbers offensively way down from what we've seen the last couple of years. Love to see him run into one right here and tie this thing up. Just never really got on track. Never got on one of those rolls extended period of time. No, he hasn't. Not yet. That's a call strike, and now it's 0 and 2. Keep it going, Philly. Keep it going.
Starts that one off. Fired in a four for 27 slump. It's hurt it more this year than it has in the previous years. The, the curveball slider down and away. And that's going to be a base hit right center field. Boston will go first to third. Rockies have put together four straight hits, five singles in the inning. And that'll bring up DJ LeMay here. Great for Lane. And hold it back. He wasn't happy with the second call for a strike. Now he gets a fastball up by the letters. It's a tougher ball to get on top of than what you would think. And he does. Last two hits have been produced with the Rockies player behind in the count. But where did they both go? They went the other way. Don't try to do too much. Two and out. Brandon Barnes has come out in the on deck circle. Tommy Canley was up earlier. He looks like he's ready to go. Yeah, Aaron Barrett's now throwing for Washington. He's trying to get ready really quickly. Rio. Ball four, and they're loaded up for Barnes. Let's see if that's all for Fister. Mark Williams. He's going to wait. He's just waiting, I think, for the introduction of Barnes, and here he comes. So the Rockies get after Fister here at the sixth inning, and they're going to run him off. They've scored twice, and with two outs, they'll have the bases loaded. And Brandon Barnes at the plate. Bases loaded when we return. Victory, get 40% off your online order at Papa John's. Enter the promo code ROCKSWIN at PapaJohns.com. Well, the Rockies are trailing right now, 4-2 to two in the sixth, but they put together a rally. Two runs on five hits. The bases are loaded now. And Brandon Barnes, who is tied with Reed Johnson and Travis Snyder, who we just saw with the Pirates for the NL lead, and hits off the bench. 
will face Aaron Barrett, the University of Mississippi product. Man, he's a true rookie. Striking out a lot of guys, 36 strikeouts and 30 and two thirds innings. Opponents hitting 225 against Barrett. Rocky saw Aaron in Washington in one game. He gave up a run during that ball game. 93 to 96 miles an hour will be his fastball. Also throws a slider. It's about 85 miles an hour. But you look for the heat coming off the bench if you're Brandon Barnes. Ben Paulson singled in his first uh, big league run. He's at third. Rosario is at second. He singled. And LeMahieu just walked. For his career, two for nine with the bases loaded, but this year, one for three. Look at two for four. Oh, it takes guts to come out and throw a first pitch slider. Your reliever. Barnes started yesterday in Pittsburgh. This is bounce foul. Big hard sinker at 95. Barnes in yesterday's game. Just one for three and a walk. Scored one of the two runs for the Rockies. Check it one of the three runs for the Rockies. Oh and two. Left yeah, off. Flat. <laughs> this last pitch, you, your eyes light up. All you see when a, a hanger slides or just stays flat like that, you see BP fastball. That's what your mind registers. Say it hit me. Levin's a left-hander up for Washington. Got him on a slider in the dirt, and all the uh, catcher Ramos has to do is touch home play with the force there. In the inning, the Rockies scored twice, five hits. It's four to two now. After the Rockies scored a couple of times, we go to the top of the seventh inning this week on Rockies Real Time. Ryan Spielberg sits down with four-time All-Star and close friend Troy Tulowitzki. 
talk all things baseball. Plus, one of Tulo's college coaches joins the group to uh, visit about Tulo's years at Long Beach State. That's this week on Rockies Real Time. That's Friday after the postgame show. Tommy Canley's on here in the seventh inning. Ryan Zimmerman, Ian Desmond, Wilson Ramos. Probably one of the most valuable pitchers out of that pit this year for Colorado. It's what he's been asked to do, and the numbers he's been able to put up. This being his 38th ball game. Well, good news. Cargo is, uh, <laughs> despite a dirty uniform and a rebanded right and left hand and wrist, he's still in the ball game, thankfully. The way he laid down there for a little bit, you're just concerned that it could be, you know, a hand, a finger, a shoulder, a face, a neck. You take your pick. Left hand jammed in, face plant, fingers going into the, the cleat of Rendon, shoulder. It's just more natural for some people to slide head first. People say, why do people do it? Well, when on the base pass, some guys just it, it feels more natural to dive as opposed to go feet first. It's safer to go feet first. We understand that. It is, but going head first, you have more control over your body and how you can go out and around the, the base or the tag. You can do the swim move, but you, you can lean your body more than you can if you go in with your feet. Two and zero on Zimmerman. Zimmerman first got to the Nationals in two thousand and five. Way inside. Pitch walk to Zimmerman. Well, the next set in the exclusive 2014 Authentic Collectible Series gift with purchase is now available at the Rockies Dugout Store. Stop by any location to get yours before they are all gone. Six locations throughout the state. Get your gear on. Place to go for all things and everything Rockies. Ian Desmond, three for three tonight, two singles and a two run home run, his 17th of the year. Rockies have trimmed into that 4 0 lead. It's now 4 2, Washington. Doesn't get the fastball over, so he went to the slider. Make you reach out in front more, finish your, you finish your pitch. Doing. So you threw four fastballs to Ryan Zimmerman. You weren't close. You come out, you throw a slider then to Desmond. Get, get that release point back and then overthrow the fastball. So stop it. So hey, let me go out there. Let me talk to you for a minute. And remind you of your balance point. Don't rush. Don't fly open with the left shoulder. Like hitters have to do, stay back, stay back over the leg so your arm can catch up. And that's a four for four ball game for Desmond as he stayed inside that and went the other direction. It's 
two on and nobody out against Canely in the seventh. Well, the first three times he had pulled the ball, but now lets the ball travel to him. Inside out swing. It was just a just a nice piece of hitting for me and Desmond. Because the, the Rockies were just talking about how they're going to play this if it is a bunt chance, but you got Ramos, who's a big, big swing guy. I don't think he'll be trying to lay down any bunts. Tommy keeps falling behind. It's 1 0 on Ramos. For Ian Desmond, that's his first four hit game of the year. He has 12 career four hit games. And that's going to elude the dive of. DJ, here's the throw by Cargo to the play. Tagged him. I don't know if he tagged him. He tagged him. Crashed into the on deck hitter. Espinoza. Espinoza went crashing behind. Now, immediately, Chris Conroy did signal that it did touch the plate. It didn't. Didn't appear that he did. Well, first the base hit for Ramos out of the, the dive of DJ. The leadoff walk. And Zimmerman comes around and then he barrels into Espinosa. Now, where did his hand hit? Did his hand catch the plate? Boy, I don't know. From the overhead, this will give us our best look. Spinoza is telling him to get down. Okay, his fingers did catch the backside of the plate. That's as close as I've yeah. ever seen. Now the on deck hitter, he, Espinosa is doing the right thing. He has to become Zimmerman's coach, but I don't know if I've ever seen a guy that and close take, to the plate. And then take somebody out. Yeah. 5 2 on the RBI single by Ramos. His 20th RBI. Desmond went first to third. Now Espinosa at the plate. Here comes the runner home. He'll score. Desmond on the wild pitch. Another wild pitch. And it's six to two. That's just that's just a free run. Yeah. Well, it was a free because when, when the throw came home, he went first to third. So he was there in the in the easier scoring position. Tommy has not been around the plate, and then it bounces out in front of home plate, try to knock it down. Did Willine? Desmond keeps some momentum going and never stops. Bryce Harper's in the on deck circle to hit the ground ball to. Paulson and move the runner. This is where not having that second left hander in the bullpen hurts you. 
if you could have, once they announced Harper, you could have you could have brought in whoever it was who out there, whether it was Boone or Franklin wasn't in the starting rotation now. But you have to wait, keep Rex, possibly for the eighth inning. But you needed a shutdown inning. Your offense came back. It was four to two. You needed this shutdown inning. Absolutely. Rocky's bullpen has not been in a good place lately, and that's an understatement. One and zero. Harper, six first last fourteen at the plate, not getting the start tonight against the left-hander Morales. Infield's in for the Rockies. They trail now by four again. At the top of the seventh. He's lowered his hands considerably. He did that over the All Star break when he went home to Las Vegas and visited with his dad, who's you know, always been his hitting coach. A more direct path to the ball. If you have your hands too high, then you can do one of two things. You have to drop them back down, and then you end up swinging uphill, or you could just, with the, its hands where they are, you just push them back and then come through the zone. One and two. So he used to have his hands up into this area right there, so he lowered them down, and then you just take them back before you go forward. Plus, he's more upright. Yeah. We watched him during BP. I don't care what his stance is, he hits the ball a mile. He has got ridiculous strength. He's saying he, that he, he tipped tip. it. Chris Conroy's not buying it. Here comes Matt Williams. Well, you would be able to hear it if, it if there was two sounds. First, it would be going off the bat and then into the glove. Henley's going to come down also. That's what an umpire will go on. He'll go on sound. Give a listen to see if we can hear two clicks. Mike Shaw Super Super Mo will. I don't think, I don't he, think I don't, so. No, I don't think he touched it. No, the two hits that you heard was off the glove and then the shin guard. Swung over the top. Two outs, Denard Span at the plate. On the inside corner for a strike. Spans one for three and a walk. Ramos at third. That's inside. One and one. Frankie went six innings, allowed four runs, three earned, nine hits, three walks, three strikeouts. Doug Fister went five and two thirds. Allowed two runs on nine hits, a couple of walks, four strikeouts. Fastball by 
In the inning, though, a couple of runs. Zimmerman walked leading off. Desmond, who singled, both scored. It's 6-2, to two, Washington, middle of seven. And Washington is up six to two, and with the Nationals here, that I tell you about this date in history. It was on this day in 2006 that the Nationals started the President's Race at RFK Stadium. George Washington won the first race. We're showing you some footage from this year when the Rockies were there, right before July the fourth. People thought that Teddy Roosevelt would finally win a race on the final day of the 2007 season because that's when the Nationals left RFK Stadium to head to Nationals Park. But Teddy was confused. He was at Nationals Park, so he couldn't win that race. He actually snapped his 525-game losing streak on October the 3rd, 2012, to celebrate the Nationals getting in to the playoffs. Drew and Jeff, Abe has won the most all-time races of the President's Race. Started this day at RFK. 2006. I think he won a couple times when, when we were back there Teddy? this year. No, Abe. Oh, yeah, yeah. I shook Abe's hand, too. <laughs> hey, it's a forefather. Ted, <laughs> Teddy doesn't run well. No, and, you know, he gets disqualified for using a golf cart, etc. He's a little shady at times. <laughs> Not saying anything about his presidency or anything, <laughs> like, but just the race. Charlie Blackman against Jerry Blevins here at the seventh. Dougie would be very upset with us if we didn't point out that Blevins is a bait flyer. Well, there you go. They have something in common now. Blevins making his 42nd appearance, the league hitting just 232 against him. Greg Stamen was also a teammate of Jerry Blevins at Dayton. Also out in the bullpen, but he was uh, came over from Oakland in a trade. Outfielder Billy Burns. Lefties have had trouble against Jerry this year. Right handers hitting 338 against him. Rutledge takes a strike on the outer edge. Josh is one for three, singled up the middle last inning. Pulled to third. Rendon throws out Josh. Two outs. If your windshield has a nick in it, give Safe Flight a call. SafeFlight.com. Safe Flight on 303 287 5000 on the phone. Corey Dickerson's 0 for 3, reached on a fielder's choice and scored last inning.
Clemens, a 17th round pick out of the University of Dayton in 04. Here he comes. He went to a high school in Ohio that had only 39 in his graduating class, which reminded me of Jordy Mercer, who's from a small town in Oklahoma. He had seven, seven in his graduating class. We'll see Jordy Mercer again next weekend. I'm thinking he was the athlete of the year in his class. <laughs> One and two. Athlete of the year, probably prom king, homecoming king. All of the above. And the Dodgers finishing the top ten of his class also. <laughs> Dodgers beat the Pirates tonight five to two. Ryu with the W. Edison Volquez with the loss. One two. Levins is six foot six. Even after all the years he's been throwing, he's still the same guy. I mean, as far as velocity, he was 91 to 93 when he was drafted, and that's what he sits at today, 10 years later. Three and two on Corey. And Dickerson with a base hit in center field. That's a vintage Corey Dickerson base hit. Took that breaking ball off the dirt, basically. So he's exceptional hand eye coordination to do that. Mike Shaw, Subaru, Super Bowl. Look at how they thought that. Look at this knee, how he had to drop it down, and look how low that barrel gets down to the ground before he makes contact. He could draw up the perfect execution of a swing, etc. A lot of times it comes down to exquisite hand eye coordination. Todd Helton yes. had it, Corey Dickerson has it. And I don't care how many reps you take or what you do, you just, you're just born with it. But here you you've got it other guys you don't up and in on cargo how many times do we see help with the bat literally perpendicular to the ground square it up like he's playing croquet <laughs> cargo base hit his last time up he's been on twice one for two and a walk Two and oh. Fans follow at Root Sports underscore RM on Twitter to receive alerts for the Rockies taco special and the Rockies score at least seven in a game. Six to two, Rockies. Trailing the Nationals at the bottom of the seventh with two outs. Okay, baby, here we go. Get ready. Get ready. The counts where Plevins will use the, the, the sweeping slider. Started at a left-hander's 
back and work it all the way across the plate. Three and two. There it is, and he struck him out with it. Cargo frustrated. Understandably slow, so, and the Rockies will head to the eighth inning, trailing by four runs, six to two. Time for the Cooney Lexus look back. Ben Paulson in his major league debut, his first major league at bat with a line single to left field. No score in the fourth inning. Franklin Morales would serve up a two run home run to Ian Desmond, his 17th of the year. 19th home run allowed by Morales. Washington would go on to score four times in that fourth inning. The Rockies would counter with a couple of runs in the sixth inning. And Ben Paulson was involved there again. An RBI single for Paulson. He's got two of the Rockies' 10 hits tonight. 6 to 2, Washington, as we go to the eighth inning. That's brought to you by Cooney Lexus, where luxury has a new address open in Greenwood Village, Colorado Springs. Nick, uh, uh, Tommy Canley remains in the ballgame. And it's Anthony Rendon, Jason Worth, and Adam LaRoche in the eighth. First pitch strike. It's high, one and one. One of the rare times this season where Tommy has not commanded the fastball. 21 pitches. 11 strikes, 10 balls. Tried to pull that back into the zone. It was off the forward strike zone. Remains two and two. And a 
strikeout of Rendon. Third strikeout for Tommy Canely. Jason Worth will come up. He's two for three and a walk, single and a double. Well, the first 15,000 fans through the gates this Sunday will receive a Michael Kadire collectible jersey courtesy of Wells Fargo. We'll get your tickets to this game against the Pirates today. And speaking of Kadire, he underwent an MRI around 4.35 o'clock. Hopefully the results will be known either later tonight or tomorrow whether he can start to resume baseball activities and or if he has to wait two more weeks. I know he's he's getting anxious to, to at least have that arm out of a sling all the time. I know you, you get to that point where okay let me just start to stretch it. Let me let, let's get that range of motion back. And yeah, uh, keep your fingers crossed he's ready uh, he gets the uh, Positive <laughs> yes. results from that MRI. 2 0 on Worth. Three and one. Bounce to third. No one's got it. Two outs. Bring up Adam LaRoche. Is going to become a free agent at the end of this year. Some people are wondering if he'll stick around or they'll think about moving Zimmerman over there full time. Well, Mike Rizzo, their general manager, typically travels with them. He's on this trip. And one of the things in the uh, Near term, that Mike would like to see happen is add a big left handed bat off their bench for late in games. Conversations over the next nine to ten days with the trade deadline coming up. Where clubs are to evaluate. Mike Rizzo in the blue shirt. Kind of started last week with the uh, Houston Street going from San Diego to Anaheim. It's a big trade for the Angels. Well, 
think it's a good pickup because they also have them under control for next year too. Angels look like uh, they're finally putting it all together. First time in a few years. Two and two on LaRoche. All the big boys are hitting. You got your pool holes and <laughs> Trout, he always hits, but pool holes is healthy and Josh Hamilton. It's quite a threesome in the middle of that lineup. They're all going three and two. So slowly hit to DJ Good transfer. And a one, two, three, eight inning for Tommy Canely. Rockies trailing six to two. They had six outs to work with offensively. Arenado will lead it off. Century link link to what's next tomorrow evening game two of this uh, three-game series between the Rockies and Nationals Jordan Zimmerman one of the most talented right-handers in the National League and Johan Kulande will make his fourth big league start That's tomorrow evening right here on Root Sports our coverage begins at six o'clock with the pregame show Arenado singled in a run in the sixth inning he'll lead things off against Blevins Strike one. Outside. Span easy play for Denard. Let's check in with Mark Stout. Mark. All right, guys, let's show you the big first night of the bigs for Ben Paulson, who steps to the plate in his first at bat. Ben Paulson wearing number four, hits left, goes opposite field for a single off of Doug Fister. There's his family. A few flew in from Wisconsin, and then he had an RBI that went to the gap between left and center. So he gets his first hit, first RBI. Grew up in Georgia. And as a guy that throws right, I said, you played short, right? Yep, played short and third. Guess who his favorite player was growing up? Chipper. Bingo. Is there a kid in Georgia that <laughs> no. didn't love Chipper growing up? Come on. 
That's a layup. A one on Paulson, who's had a very fine big league debut. As Mark illustrated, this ball's leaned on a deep right, and it's caught. Worth got back there. Swung the bat extremely well in his major league debut. What is that on the fellow tonight? I think a big size say I've made it. I had a great good night, and he's gonna sleep well. And they can never take it away. Uh-huh. Two outs will lean at the plate. He singled his last time. Crowd of 33,082 tonight at Coors Field. One and one. Rockies, the Troy Hawkins. Looks like he's going to come in next half inning. High fly ball left field. Ryan Zimmerman. And it's a 1 2 3 inning for Blevins. 6 to 2, Washington off to the ninth. Baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by Ram Trucks. The Ram 1500 is Motor Trend's 2014 Truck of the Year and first ever back to back champion. Washington leading the Rockies 6 to 2 as we go to the top of the ninth inning. To center field we go and we visit uh, with Jenny and Spilly and Jason Hirsch. Hi, guys. Hey, Drew, coming up on the Toyota Post Game Show. We're going to talk about Colorado's rough continuation, not the way you wanted to kick things off at home. No, we talked about Jekyll and Hyde to start the game, and we'll talk to you guys in the post game report about where Franklin Morales went wrong. Yeah, and then we'll also talk about some bright spots. Ben Paulson, of course, having a nice two for four game so far. It's always good to see a guy taking advantage of an opportunity. It's all coming up right after baseball. Drew Huey. All right, Jenny, thank you. The Troy Hawkins will throw this ninth inning, 36th appearance for Hawkins, and he got to run him out there. I mean, Walt faced with a situation where you can't have a guy not throw for literally almost a couple of weeks when you throw in the All Star break. Yeah, the first time since July 11th, and, and yesterday, after the ball game was over, as I just looked out into the bullpen, there was Hawk. He was having to throw some to get some work in. So Canley goes a couple innings, gives up two runs on two hits, a walk and three strikeouts. Zimmerman one for three in a walk. He scored twice in the game. Hitting 418 since June the 30th. Two strike count.
mentioned June 30th. Just look back at my book. So Ryan Zimmerman at that point was hitting 233. And now he's 288. Now guys find where they belong. Zimmerman's been doing it for a number of years. He went. He went. Yeah, tied him up. So Honkin strikes out Zimmerman. The Ford strike zone is powered by built Ford Tough Trucks. Built better, built stronger, built Ford Tough. No wonder Ford F Series are the best selling truck 37 years running. It's not on the Ford strike zone, but it doesn't matter to Latroy. Slipped out of his hand. Zimmerman couldn't hold up. You get the punch out. It's just his 15th strikeout, 33 and a third. He doesn't strike out a, a high number like uh, he used to, even though the stuff off at times is still 93 to 95. For well, a contact oh. closer, that's off to the Troy. Hopefully he's all right, and it gets past Arenado. That'll be a base hit, and that is. The fifth hit of the game for Ian Desmond. It's the second time in his career he's had a five hit ball game. So, Hawks okay. Says he's all right, but that ball squared him up in his right forearm. He's still looking for the ball after it. Went off his arm. Ooh. A little painful. <laughs> Trying to get out of the way and react and duck. And even after it hits him, where, where did it go? Let me try to get him out. Ground ball to first. Knocked down by Paulson. Two outs as he gets Ramos. The Rockies' wives continued their season of charity events this Friday. They'll be at all gates until the second inning, collecting school supplies that will benefit area schools. Specific items requested include crayons, markers, glue sticks, notebooks, and two plastic Two pocket plastic folders. Cash donations will also be accepted. Friday, July 25th, this Friday. Donate school supplies. This ball is ripped to right center field. That'll drive in a run. Espinoza is headed to third with a triple. Seven to two. Third triple of the season. 19th RBI for Espinosa. Two RBIs tonight. He snapped out of an 0 for 27. With a double earlier in the game and now with a triple. Kevin Franson. Pitch hit. Just the second earned run in the last 17 games allowed by. The Troy Hawkins going back to May 24th. In fact, he's allowed only seven hits since May 24th. The league 
was hitting under 100. You were talking about you. It's just, remarkable. It is it just with his numbers and what he's been able to do. Just haven't been able to get him out there enough. Rutledge will get Franson. Well, Franson hurt himself. He's gonna jog it up the line. A couple of hits and a run in the inning. It's seven to two, Washington. The Colorado Rockies may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Colorado Rockies. Nationals opened up a 4 0 lead. The Rockies closed at one juncture to, uh, to 4 to 2. It's now 7 2 Washington as we go to the bottom of the ninth inning. And the Nats will send out Ross Detweiler, who's working out of the bullpen now. Former sixth pick in the draft. Years back out of Missouri State. He's always been a starting pitcher. Yeah, from 2011 to 2013, he made 50 starts, but 43 career relief appearances since then. For Detweiler. Fastball, curveball are his two primary pitches. DJ Charlie Culberson is on the on deck circle. So LeMay who will lead it off. Credited for a, a double in the second inning, pop fly to shallow right that was dropped by Espinosa. He was running out his back to the infield. Difficult play. Worth couldn't get there. Originally uh, an error on Espinosa. They changed it the next half inning. So DJ gets a double. He's one for two and a walk. Two and two. He's 
smooth and easy 95. Detweiler. Well, that's how you get drafted. Yeah. Sixth overall. Most games he's won in the season is 10. That's on the outside corner. thought this pitch was away. He has a right to argue. Earlier in the game, that wasn't a strike. It was north and south was, but not east and west. Back and make the catch. Two outs. That'll bring up Charlie Black. Then a reminder if you have auto glass damage, trust Safe Flight online at safeflight.com on the phone at 303 287 5000. Charlie denied a double back in the first. He's one for four. 0 and 1. Going to end the game. Bouncer to first, and it's a 1 2 3 9 for Ross Detweiler and the Rockies have now lost their sixth in a row. The final tonight, Washington in game one of this three game set defeats Colorado 7 to 2. Doug Fister gets the victory. He's now 9 and 2. Franklin Morales suffers the loss. He's 5 and 5, and the Nationals move a game up on Atlanta in the National League East. The Rockies have now lost 24. Of their last 28 games, they fall to 40 and 59. The Nationals are 54 and 43. Our Jimmy John's freaky fast delivery of the game. It was a big night for Ian Desmond, the terrific shortstop of the Washington Nationals. He had five hits for the second time in his career, and that included a two run home run to get the Nationals on the scoreboard. A five for five performance for Ian Desmond. That is our freaky fast delivery of the game brought to you by Jimmy Johns. Again, the final score Washington 7 and Colorado 2. The Toyota postgame show will follow this commercial break.